Hey guys, I'm Kaya. And I'm Dev, and today we're taking a look at the controversial history surrounding heroes of color and the hard fought battle it took to get the recognition they deserve. Yeah, because after decades of fighting for representation in comic book movies, Black Panther is a dream come true for a lot of us. But it took a long, hard fight to get here. Let's see how T'Challa and other trailblazing heroes paved the way for the, the rise, rise of, of black, black superheroes. superheroes. Now before we start, I should warn you that some of the early comics we're gonna show you are full of some pretty shitty stereotypes. It's an ugly part of superhero history, but it's not something we should ever forget because when it comes to black superheroes, they've come a long way. Black Panther is officially the first black superhero, but he's not the first black character to star in a comic book. You can thank Oren C. Evans for that. Yeah, he was one of the first black reporters to work at a white newspaper, and after the paper closed, he tried to break down the walls of the comic book industry, too. In 1947, Evans published the first and only issue of all Negro comics starring characters like the detective, Ace Harlem, and the African warrior, Lion Man. Not the smartest or the most complex uh, name for an African warrior. They're insensitive by today's standards, but this wasn't a case of white authors trying to exploit black culture through ugly caricatures. As Evans proudly put it himself, every brushstroke and pen line in the drawings on these pages are by Negro artists. Sadly, he was way ahead of his time. After all Negro comics went bust, it took years to see more black representation in comics, and what we got wasn't great. No. The company that became Marvel had a hit in the 50s with Waku, Prince of the Bantu, and in 1965, Dell Publishing released Lobo, a western about a black cowboy who was the first black character to star in his own comic. Lobo only lasted two issues thanks to low sales. They printed 200,000 copies and only sold around 15,000. That's not a lot at all. No. It's like Amityville numbers. Those movies don't make money. I got a really bad feeling about this. A lot of retailers actually sent their shipments back to the distributor unopened because they refused to sell a book with a black character as a star. You've got to remember that these are just simple farmers. These are people of the land. The common clay of the New West. You know. More. <laughs> Dell couldn't make black heroes a reality in the 60s, but over at Marvel, the House of Ideas was about to unleash one of their most important creations of all, Black Panther. One year after Lobo fizzled out, the Black Panther made his unforgettable debut in Fantastic Four number 52. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby had been experimenting with positive black characters before, like Gabe Jones and Nick Fury's Howling Commandos, but T'Challa was different. Very different. He had powers, he had a costume, he was a superhero right down to his awesome yet controversial name. Yeah, for decades there's been a lot of confusion over whether the character was named after the political group or the other way around. Turns out it was pretty much a coincidence. The Black Panther Party didn't exist when T'Challa made his debut, but a group in Alabama that inspired them was using a panther as its symbol. So there's precedent, but it's unlikely two old white guys in New York would have been aware of it. <laughs> Three months after the issue was published, Huey Newton and Bobby Seale formed the Black Panthers, completely independent of the comic book character. They couldn't shake the connection, and in 1972, Marvel actually tried renaming T'Challa to Black Leopard. Because technically, a panther is a leopard, so that it works. Doesn't make it better. This is bullshit. Bullshit cop out, and Marvel knew it, so they switched it back after a year, like no one would notice. So after the success of Black Panther, the floodgates for black superheroes were open, right? You'd think so, but let's be honest here, it was more of a slow drip. Marvel introduced the first African-American superhero in 1969, Sam Wilson, AKA The Falcon. I can think of better jobs than being Captain America's second most famous sidekick. Don't say it, don't you say it. I left. Come on! But he got a major boost in status after Anthony Mackie's awesome portrayal in the MCU. And in the comics, he even got to wield the shield himself. Marvel's first black character to get his own book was Luke Cage, AKA Power Man. Cage's early exploits featured a lot of dated stereotypes, but over the years, he evolved into a fleshed out, more mature character. He grew into a partner, a father, and as a wrongly convicted black man with bulletproof skin, a powerful symbol to protest against the system that fails so many people of color. In 1975, Marvel introduced one last huge landmark character, the first black woman superhero. Any guesses? I'll give you a hint. Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? Oh, I hate this line. The same thing that happens to everything else! <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. 
<laughs> it's accurate. The Distinguished Competition was a little slower to getting with the times. DC debuted their first black hero in 1971, your favorite Green Lantern, Jon Stewart. It's lame that DC's only black representation was literally a substitute for the real Green Lantern, but he came into his own, especially after Phil Lamar's awesome take on the character in Justice. In brightest day, in blackest night, no evil shall escape my sight. Let those who worship evil's might Beware my power, Green Lantern's light! It took DC six more years to come up with a completely original black superhero, Black Lightning. He's the first character since all Negro comics to actually be co-created by a person of color, Guyanese artist Trevor Von Eden. Guyanese. Hey, representation for you. For me, because I'm Guyanese. <laughs> hey. Black Lightning inspired a lot of clones and copycats, including the first superhero color to star in a kid's TV show. Superhero Static Shock. Boop, boop. Superhero Static Shock. Static Shock played a huge part in my development as a fan, so it was cool to see the hero that inspired him get his own series on the CW this year. Black Lightning is finally getting the recognition he deserves as one of DC's pioneering black superheroes. In 2018, it's still a pretty big deal to have a superhero of color starring his own show, but we would never have been struck by Black Lightning if not for the black superheroes on film that came before. You can trace their origins to the black exploitation flicks of the 60s and 70s. Characters like Shaft and Dolomite weren't based on comic books, but the larger than life heroes have plenty in common with them. They defend the innocent and protect their communities, have their own theme songs and awesome catchphrases. You say this cat is a bad mother. Shut your mind. I'm talking about Shaft. Then we can dig it. And they're known to wear a colorful costume from time to time. Yeah. Dolomite's a good, like, 1975 black exploitation film. It's really bad. The mic keeps dropping in to frame, like, every other thing. And they take reaction shots from, like, other scenes and use them in other scenes, so it's really Oh, funny. that's really funny. It's really good. But there were no opportunities for real superhero movies starring people of color, so in 1991, writer-director Robert Townsend had to create his own. In Meteor Man, Townsend plays a teacher who gets whacked by a glowing green rock from space. They give him your standard superpowers, meteor vision, flight, and dog telepathy. Woof, woof. It's not the greatest movie ever made, but it's important for what it represents. It's a superhero film created from scratch by a person of color, and judging from the star power, Hollywood's black community was excited to be a part of it. Seriously though, how many movies have Darth Vader, Willie Jones, and Biz Marquis? Just one, Dev. Just one, yeah. Meteor Man. <laughs> Meteor Man didn't do so at the box office, and neither did Damon Wayne's comedy, Blank Man. The original characters weren't cutting it, but in 1997, we finally got two movies based on established black comic stars. Spawn, which I still maintain is an awesome movie, yeah. and Steel, which I can't really defend. It's hammer time. I mean, sorry Shaq, it takes more than the tattoo to make you Superman. Yeah. Well, I'll be dipped in shit and rolling breadcrumbs. Around this time, Wesley Snipes was trying to get a Black Panther movie off the ground. It never happened, but in 1998, he starred as a different kind of superhero in a movie that helped ignite the current craze, Blade. Blade was unlike any superhero we'd seen before. He didn't take any shit. What the f are you out of your damn mind? He killed the f out of vampires. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. And he was unapologetically black. Yeah. Unlike his predecessors, Blade was a big hit at the box office. It spawned two sequels, and for a while, underrepresented people were really excited about a new wave of black superhero films, and then just nothing. <laughs> Unless you count Hancock or Catwoman, and no one yeah. wants to talk about Hancock and Catwoman. I mean, I want to talk about Hancock. I like Hancock. Hancock was great. I'm fine with Hancock. Hancock was my first black superhero, I would say. Yeah, same. Yeah. And he looks good in his like f***ing leather when he comes out like to do the bank. With the Ice. little tiny like hawk slash falcon. Yeah. Yeah, He's it like, was cute. Good job. Good job. Good job. Really good job. Good movie. It was <laughs> good job. Good movie. Good job. In recent years, black heroes have shown up in important supporting roles. Like Falcon, War Machine, and Nick motherfucking Fury. Don't forget Cyborg. But Black Panther is the first movie to put characters of color front and center. From its talented black director, amazing cast, and inspiring Afrofuturistic feel, Black Panther is a huge step forward for the genre. And just like the character Rock the World of Comics, the movie has a chance to change how the world sees a black superhero. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. 
Yeah, we really loved going through the whole history of black superheroes to see how we got to Black Panther. Yeah, if you guys have any of your favorite black heroes from TV, comics, movies, let us know in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd. Thank you.